Easy on the track, boy. A few years ago, Young Thug was at the top of the game. After years of hard work and dedication to climbing the ladder of the music business, he had finally reached the pinnacle. He had successful solo releases and he had launched his own record label, YSL, or Young Stoner Life in 2016. Not to mention, he had signed several other artists who had began to see their own success, chiefly among them, Gunna. However, the legal system had different plans. Authorities were convinced that YSL was more than just the record label making catchy songs. They believed that there was a darker side rooted in crime. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and today's episode of Life After Rap is a bit different because it's not set in stone that Young Thug's career is over. Rather, we'll cover the rise of Young Thug and the history of both Young Stoner life and Young Slime life. This is Life After Rap, The Trials of Young Thug. But before we get started, please take a second to stop and hit that like button for me. Liking and sharing these videos is the best way to get the YouTube algorithms to notice us. But with that being said, let's get into the story. Born Jeffrey Lamar Williams in 1991, Young Thug was raised in Atlanta's Jonesboro South Projects near Cleveland Avenue. As the second youngest of 11 siblings, childhood was pretty tough for a young Jeffrey growing up in the hood. He was drawn to the streets early on and by the time he was in middle school, he found himself expelled for breaking the teacher's arm, an infraction that would earn him four years stay in juvie. Much like many kids from the hood, Jeffrey dabbled in rap. But over time, he and others noticed that he was actually pretty good at it and he began to make mixtapes. And over the next two years, he released three installments of his mixtape series titled, I Came From Nothing which caught the attention of Gucci Mane, who would later sign him to his label, 1017 Brick Squad. In 2013, Thug released his first mixtape with Gucci Mane titled 1017 Thug. Critically speaking, Young Thug was being praised to the high heavens, but his music was definitely polarizing. While some saw it as a fresh new sound energizing the rap game, others saw it as mumbling, non-intelligible gibberish serving as further testament of the fall in quality the rap had slowly been seeing since the end of the 2000s. But none of that mattered to Jeffrey though. He was too busy trying to hang on to the rocket ship that was blasting him to the top. In July of 2013, Complex included him on their list of 25 new rappers to watch out for. Later that year, he released his commercial debut single, Stoner. By the time 2014 rolled around, Young Thug was in high demand. He revealed that he had been offered an $8.5 million deal from Future's Free Band's record label. And in March of that year, people wondered if he had signed with Cash Money because he was always around Birdman so much. Mind you, at this time, Young Thug was actually technically signed to 1017. Turns out, Young Thug had only signed a management deal with Birdman's Rich Gang, not a record deal. Now on one hand, Young Thug was making tons of connections, but on the other hand, he had tons of hands in his pockets. Throughout his early career, Young Thug skirted a weird line of admiration slash swaggerjacking slash stalking of Lil Wayne. Thug had stated before he even got on that he wanted to be the next Lil Wayne, so once he started to gain attention, he set out to achieve this. And in March of 2014, Young Thug announced his debut album will be titled The Carter Six, a play on Wayne's Carter album series. Now obviously, there will be issues with this. Long story short, Lil Wayne basically put the kibosh to his plans and Young Thug had to change the name to The Barter Six and it actually only came out as a mixtape. After signing the Kevin Lyles and Lior Cohen's label 300 Entertainment, Thug would launch his YSL label, or Young Stoner Life, as a subsidiary. Throughout this time, Young Thug also engaged in activities that some might deem questionable. He dressed in women's clothing, he unnecessarily referred to smoking blunts as quote unquote smoking dicks. Rumors swirled that Young Thug might be gay, and rather than trying to dissuade these notions, he actually kind of leaned into them. 
Through YSL Records, Thug will sign artists such as Gunna, Lil' Keed, and others. With YSL, Young Thug had plans to reach back to offer opportunities to others that he didn't necessarily have when he was getting into the game. But authorities looked at YSL in a completely different light. Turns out, Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis and team have been watching Young Thug and cohorts since 2012. They were alleging that there were two factions to YSL, Young Stoner Life, the record label, and Young Slime Life, the street gang. This gang was said to be involved in various criminal activities in Atlanta, creating a dual identity for YSL that intertwined music and street life activities. Perhaps it didn't help Young Thug's case that in 2018, he released albums titled Slime Language and Slime Language 2 in 2021. Much of this will come back to bite him in his ass, but we'll get to that in a bit. Authorities have been hot on their trail for years, conducting extensive surveillance which included wiretapping and monitoring their social media activity. Then, on May 9th of 2022, they arrested Young Thug along with 27 other alleged gang members as part of a sprawling 56 count indictment. Determined to nail Thugger's ass to the wall, the Atlanta prosecution hit him with charges for allegedly participating in violent street activities and conspiring to violate the RICO Act. He was tied to accusations of murder, assault, robbery, theft, gun possession, illegal drug possession, and even more around the Atlanta area, was dating all the way back from 2012. Less than 48 hours after Thug was arrested, they got Gunner too, charging him with one RICO count. The prosecution employed a host of novel and arguably shady tactics to tie Young Thug to the case. They used lyrics from his song, they cited photos taken of Young Thug flashing YSL hand signs, while wearing red clothing and standing near other co-defendants. Now it's important to note that much of this predated the formation of Young Stoner Life, the record label, so take that however you will. But perhaps one of the strongest pieces of evidence that the state was presenting came in the form of a car rental made by Young Thug in 2015. A 2014 Infiniti Q50 sedan that was later used in the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr. Based off this, prosecutors painted Thug as the mastermind behind this and several other slayings of rival gang members. It got so crazy that at times the prosecution began roping in wild accusations, such as a July 7, 2015 altercation Thug had with a mall security guard claiming that Young Thug made quote-unquote terroristic threats by making the following statement. Quote, If you continue to approach me, I'll shoot you in the face with a gun. End quote. Now anybody that ever heard Young Thug speak or rap knows he doesn't even talk like that. All total, they were claiming that Young Thug had committed 36 quote-unquote overt acts including lyrics from 10 songs, 11 social media posts, and six private communications between him and his associates. In May of 2022, Young Thug was denied bond and remanded to Fulton County Jail, where he still sits to this day. Gunna eventually got bond after accepting a plea deal and admitting that YSL was both a rap label and a street gang. The trial finally began in January of 2023, and by then, only half of the originally charged 28 individuals, including Young Thug himself, were set to be tried due to plea deals, failure to apprehend, or defendants being unable to retain attorneys. The trial started off being a shit show. A prospective juror was detained for recording with a cell phone in the courtroom. A guy's attorney was arrested for contraband, and all the while Young Thug tried time and time again to get bond, ultimately citing health problems after a brief hospital stay. But the judge claimed that he posed a significant witness intimidation risk, so no dice. Also in January of this year, Tarante Stevenson took to the witness stand after agreeing to a plea deal with eight years of probation and testified that he 
Young Thug, and another co-defendant were in fact the founders of YSL, the street gang, in a move that I'm sure definitely couldn't have helped Young Thug's case. Today, years later, Young Thug still sits in jail. The judge in the trial has employed some unique tactics to say the least by using lyrics from Young Thug's songs as evidence of criminal activity. This has spawned all kinds of controversy, as you might imagine, for on the one hand, these are just songs. It's art. We don't think Arnold Schwarzenegger was a legit killer despite all of the bodies he caught on film. But on the other hand, to my knowledge, old Arnie was never criminally adjacent in that way. Young Thug, on the other hand, grew up in the hood, ten toes in the streets. So I'm sure he had plenty of friends who he wanted to help once he had the ability to do so. Thing is though, if you made it out and now have a multi-million dollar career rapping about street shit, then maybe, just maybe, it's not a good idea to be in any way involved in said street shit personally. Not to say that you gotta cut guys off necessarily, but you kinda do to a certain extent. Mainly if they refuse to get out of the streets and what they're doing is rubbing dirt all off on you. Either way, the verdict is still out on whether Young Thug was in fact involved to a degree enough that they can stick a Rico on him. But one thing's for certain, this saga doesn't seem to be coming to a close anytime soon. But what do you think? Do you think Thugger has a good case? Do you think they should be able to use his music against him? Hit us in the comment section and let us know. Also, if you made it this far, then we hope that that means that you enjoyed the video. And if so, please hit that like and subscribe button for us. Liking the video is the only way to help us continue to grow as a smaller channel. And subscribing is the best way to be notified whenever we drop a new episode so that you can watch all of them and help us help so that you can watch all of them and help blow us up but with that being said i'm nate the great from takeflight214.com signing out until next time peace Now we see on the track, boy.